There's just a lot going on. And what really has called me to course is this latest bill from um, Oklahoma that would ban gender affirming care up until the age of 26. For years, we've been hearing from anti-trans pundits and politicians that this is about children. This is about protecting the children. But I think what this Oklahoma law reveals is that it's never been about the children. It's always been about scapegoating trans people, stigmatizing us and criminalizing our existence, making us not exist. And we have um, pundits, um, anti-trans pundits, and politicians on television every single day saying horrible things about trans people on the internet saying horrible things about trans people things that are leading to bomb threats mm -hmm. at the Boston Children's Hospital um, the higher right chick the um, founder of libs of TikTok, um, took credit for that bomb threat and also um, um, had pr um, boasted proudly on Tucker Carlson that she has communicated with Ron DeSantis's um, administration and that her work her anti-trans propaganda work led directly to the don't say gay bill. So the way we talk about trans people and with trans people in the media has an effect on these policies. A lot of the ways in which we're seeing trans people be talked about on the internet and in the news, those exact ways are finding them there. Um, that language is finding its way into legislation. So I wanted to come on today for all of those people who have the best of intentions and want to support trans people, don't know the right language, don't know how to talk about it or scared to say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. We need the right language to combat this. They've um, anti-trans folks have been setting the agenda and how we talk about this and we need to take back the narrative and we need to do it right away because it is, what is it? Um, January 19th, and there have already been 151 bills targeting trans and LGBTQ people introduced in state legislatures just this year alone, 151. It's January 19th. You just watched actress Laverne Cox succinctly explain how odious figures with large platforms ranging from Republican politicians to Twitter influencers, they're not just controlling the narrative with respect to trans issues, they are outright influencing legislation that is being passed. And if we keep allowing them to monopolize discourse, things are only going to continue to get worse for trans Americans. So what we need to do is recenter the conversation, and Laverne Cox specifically explains how that can be done. Let's listen. So if you want to sort of get, if you have to get an education to some of these folks who are using the wrong language and saying the wrong things, what would it be? And I'm not language police. First no, of all, I'm not into censoring but people. But it's for understanding. But if we are interested in the humanity of trans people and understanding that we exist. What I would first of all say to all the people, there's so many wonderful pundits and politicians who say, well, gender affirming care for children, that's something that we should debate, right? Children mm -hmm. don't know. And I would actually disagree. I would actually say, hashtag, it's none of your business. If you are a parent with a trans child, mm -hmm. It is your business. I think the American Medical Association, the American um, Academy of Pediatrics, the Endocrine Society have developed wonderful protocols that have worked for treating trans children. And parents who have, are dealing with that can go and get that information. If you're a parent of a trans child, it's your business. If right. you're not, it's none of your business. What adults do with their bodies, it's none of their business. We're, this is America. It should be about freedom, bodily autonomy. I'm firmly and staunchly pro-choice, and we should have the right to do with our bodies what we want to in America. And even for children, that's their parents' um, business, it's their doctor's business. It is not a legislator's um, um, business who has doesn't know anything about it. So what I would suggest, because when, whenever we're debating whether trans folks should have access to health care, we're objectifying them. When we see um, senators in Supreme Court confirmations talking about mutilating children, we're objectifying children, talking about children's genitalia, which is disgusting. And when we objectify, we dehumanize. And that is what this whole project has been about, not making trans people real people, human beings who exist. I exist. There is no trans question. I'm not a question. I exist here. There, I have a material reality, lived experiences. And trans people have always existed. And we're not going to stop existing if people don't teach about us. So we should have acceptance. It is our business if we're discriminated against in health care, in employment, in um, um, housing, which many of these people want to do. That is our business if we believe in liberty and justice for all Americans. But what people do with their bodies is none of our business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every single thing that she said there is 100% spot on. This is about freedom. This is about liberty. I don't know why in 2023, Republicans still 
monopolize words like freedom and liberty when the policies that they produce year after year in state after state are antithetical to freedom and liberty. Everything that they do essentially restricts freedom and liberty from a personal standpoint with regard to bodily autonomy to an economic standpoint. They are against freedom and liberty. So to continue to let them pretend as if they're the ones with uh, this monopoly on freedom and liberty, it's completely bogus. This is something that I, I can no longer take them seriously about. They claim that they care about genitals of trans youth getting mutilated. But where's the outrage for circumcision? As of 2010, more than 50% of newborn infants are being subjected to a surgery that they're unable to personally consent to. Yet, Republicans are fixated on trans youth and falsely claiming that they're the ones who are getting their genitals mutilated or removed. This isn't about these specific issues, and we need to stop pretending as if they're actually concerned. This is about bigotry. And as Laverne pointed out, you know, they'll claim this is about protecting children, but yet you see increasingly more bills being proposed that ban transitioning for adults. So if this is really about the children, then how do you explain that? Well, it's because their goal is very clear. Their goal is to erase trans people out of existence, and they are going to do that by any means necessary, either by legally erasing them out of existence or preventing them from transitioning, which will increase the rate of suicidality, thus leading to more deaths. Any way that they can get trans people out of society is what they're going to do, even if they know that that causes harm. And we've got to stop pretending as if they just are ignorant and they don't know. They want trans people to die. That is the goal of Republicans. Some of them, perhaps, are just ambivalent towards trans death, uh, trans deaths and don't care if trans people die, if trans youth die. But a lot of them are vicious enough that they want to inflict as much pain and suffering on this community as possible because they believe that their existence is illegitimate. And that is the point that Laverne Cox, I think, is trying to drive home here. And it's what, it's what we all need to grapple with. Now, I want to point you to an article published back in May of 2022 by Outfront Magazine, written by Vienna Austin. And they argue that these anti-trans laws are tantamount to attempted genocide. And I think that this is a really important conversation to have. I've debated with myself about whether or not it's appropriate to use the G word, because I don't want anyone to accuse me of being hyperbolic in my advocacy of trans people. I don't want people to say, no, I don't think that it rises to genocide. We're talking about simple bigotry here. It's common. This is a civil rights issue. Um, so in order to determine whether or not this is attempted genocide against the trans community, we have to first understand what is a genocide? Now, we're going to go to the UN's criteria here. This is from the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. And this is the criteria as laid out by the UN. A, killing members of the group. B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C, deliberately inflicting upon the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. And E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. So now that you know the criteria, we're going to go to Vienna's article because they're going to tie specific policies, specific anti-trans policies to this criteria for genocide as laid out by the UN. And as you're going to see, they make a very compelling case here. They write puberty blockers and hormone replacement therapy. The topics of these policies have been shown to drastically reduce the horrifically high suicide rate of transgender youths saving lives. To block trans youth from such a treatment manufactures a higher suicide rate and thus manufactures more suicides, more deaths within the transgender community, specifically amongst youth. This flagrantly violates sections A, B, and C of the aforementioned definition. This policy produces conditions for trans youth via lack of of access to life-saving health care that caused mass mental distress in the form of suicidality and depression, which itself leads to drastically more suicides and suicide attempts. A prevalently proposed enforcement for such policies, as is the case with the aforementioned policy of Texas Governor Greg Abbott, is to treat the providing of such vital health care as child abuse. Had it not been overturned, the directive would have likely resulted in child services departments removing transgender children from affirming homes and families providing 
providing gender affirming health care and placing them into non affirming ones which do not. This enforcement would additionally meet and violate Section E of the aforementioned definition of genocide, albeit in a unique way. So let's be very clear. These anti-trans policies that are being produced by Republican-controlled legislatures across the country are going to kill trans people, trans youth, and they know about this. We need to stop pretending as if it's possible to educate them, and if they were no longer ignorant, they wouldn't propose such harmful policies. They know exactly what they're doing. Their goal is is to kill trans people. And the reason why it's so important for us to have a sober analysis and really acknowledge what their intent is here is because then, and only then, in my opinion, we're going to be able to actually address it with the urgency that is needed. Now, Laverne Cox, in this next clip that I'm going to play for you, doesn't specifically say the word genocide, but she explains how all of these issues, anti-Semitism, you know, uh, sexism, transphobia, they're all interrelated. And the Nazis also targeted LGBTQ plus people. And in fact, that was one of the first acts that um, they did. So let's listen. People should know that um, one of the first things that the Nazis did, and I think it was in 1933, was they burned Magnus Hirschfeld's um, gender for se um, um, sexuality. Magnus Hirschfeld was studying um, trans people, LGBTQ people. Lily Elby, who um, the Danish girl, the film The Danish Girl was about, she had her first gender affirming procedure at Magnus Hirschfeld's clinic. The Nazis burned it down. All of this research. And there were um, LGBTQ people in concentration camps stamped with pink triangles. So so in this moment of a rise of anti-Semitism, we see this rise, this documented mm -hmm. rise in anti-trans legislation and rhetoric. These are not a coincidence. So we, as we fight anti-Semitism, as we fight for reproductive rights, we have to fight for trans rights as well. And they're on TV every day. We need to be more vociferous. We need to be more um, engaged in this. And I know trans people are a small part of the population, but it is not unrelated to everything else that is happening. Yeah. This is about justice and bodily autonomy for everybody. It's about freedom. You've We're Americans. It. Yeah. It should be about freedom. She is exactly correct here. So it's time to treat this threat with the seriousness that it deserves. We're no longer just talking about bigotry or prejudice or discrimination. We're in much darker, more dangerous territory where an entire group of human beings in the United States are existentially threatened. And so that was the main takeaway, at least for me, from this interview with Laverne Cox. She's just trying to get people to understand that now is the time to get involved. You don't have to know all of the language, but you do need to arm yourself with the information needed to push back. You do need to know the intent behind these bills and that these lawmakers know exactly what they're doing. We can't chalk everything up to ignorance. Maybe in some cases we can, but ultimately there's enough information out there. There's enough long-term studies of trans youth out there to where if somebody is genuinely curious about trans people, they would know that gender affirming care is indeed medically necessary for trans youth. But the thing is that they don't care. And the goal is to prevent trans people from existing.